All right, this is just going to be the velocity time graph uh, for view sheets. So one says which graph represents the relationship between the speed of a freely falling object and the time of fall of the object near Earth's surface. Well, we know that if you're falling near Earth's surface, we can assume that my acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. This is always something we can assume. And we can assume that we have a constant acceleration. Our acceleration is constant, it's not changing. The only thing that's changing is our speed. Our speed is changing. All right, these are assumptions you can make. If you are accelerating, you are changing your speed. Now let's look at the graphs. Let's look at the graphs. Choice A. We're gonna draw it like that, and let's let's give this a number: five meters per second. It's that, 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 and over time, you see that my speed is constant. Well, if my speed is constant, this can't be true, right? Because if we have an acceleration, we must have a changing speed. But this graph says that we have a constant speed, and so choice A can't be it. Choice A cannot uh, be it. So now let's go back to let's see let's see choice uh let's go to choice D. I think D is a more logical leap forward than going from a straight horizontal line into a curving line. So let's look at choice D. And we get a draw the graph and that it's a straight line. Again, the slope on a VT graph, this is something we discussed in class. Slope of a on a VT graph is your acceleration. So one of VT graph is your acceleration. All right. This is something we know to be true. Well, why is my slope equal to acceleration? Well, if we do rise of a run, change in y. Uh, hold on. And I probably have to explain the whole slope thing again. Slope on a VT graph and it's your change in y over change in x. That's what this triangle means, delta y over delta x. Your y-axis is velocity, or change in velocity, and time. This is your time. x-axis is your time. Why I'm not putting change in time? Because usually uh, time starts at zero for you guys. So anything minus zero is, is itself. So that's why I neglect to put the change in. It's because usually in regions we deal with time starting at zero. So on your reference table, you'll see that there's a formula equal to this. A is equal to delta V over T. That's a formula. All right. And so your slope on a VT graph is going to be your acceleration. Well, we can assume that if my velocity is changing, let's say one, two, three, we can see it changing. It, it does have a slope which means it does have an acceleration. It does have an acceleration. It's a constant slope, so constant acceleration. The slope is not changing. My slope here, if I were to calculate the slope here, it'd be the same as the slope here. It's not changing. And so that would be the correct answer. Let's say, let's go a little bit more in depth. This is something you're not going to learn in this class, uh, is that you're never going to learn curved slopes on a VT graph. You might learn what curved slopes on a PT graph means, but on the VT graph, it's not as important. You don't really learn curved slopes on the VT graph until uh, AP Physics. But you don't need to learn this. But it's good to just go over what this means. If your slope is curved, it means your slope is changing. Slope is changing. Well, if your slope is changing, and we know that slope is acceleration, if we know that slope is acceleration, we also know that, well, my acceleration is changing. And these are all logical assumptions you can make. Well, if my slope is changing, because it's curved, 
my slope is acceleration, now must mean my acceleration is changing. And we know that a freely falling object near Earth's surface always has an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Always. This is not different. This is, this is no change. This is always the number. Okay? So it's not changing. So B is wrong and C is wrong. Let's move on to number two, number two, number two. The graph below shows the relationship between the speed and elapsed time for an object falling freely from rest near the surface of a planet. So if your speed, well, and then the question asks you, well, what is the total distance of the object that the object travels for the first three seconds? Again, in your notes, in your notes, we know that the the distance, or rather, the area underneath a cur a line and the x-axis, and again, it's very important to understand that distance is the area underneath the line and above the x-axis, or in between the line and in between the x-axis. So this is area right here. So how do I calculate area of a triangle? One half base times height. One half. My base is 3. I'm going from 0 to 3. My height, I'm going from 0 to 8. And I get 12. And then my area is 12. That must mean the distance I traveled was 12 meters. Again, if you don't know why, why, if you don't want to just trust me that area is your area is the distance traveled, well, if you look at it this way, we know the area is maybe length times side times side. So our area is V times T. On your reference table, if you uh, rearrange one of the formulas, you have this formula. And so if you have V average V bar is equal to D over T, well, if you just move the T to this side, you, you get distance or displacement. And so that's why the area is this. So the answer is uh, A, 12 meters. Number three, the magnitude of the car's acceleration is what? What is the magnitude of the car's acceleration? Well, we know that slope is my acceleration. On a VT graph, on a VT graph, and this is a manipulation of formulas. So your slope is acceleration on a VT graph. And so now, well, if your y-axis is, well, again, your slope is your delta y over delta x. Well, your change in y is 20. Your change in x is 2, and then you get 10 meters per second squared. And the answer is C. All right. Number four, shared under shared area underlined represents the toys uh, a displacement. We discussed this displacements. All right, quick, simple, easy. Quick, simple. Let's go back. All right. So let's do extra practice number one. What is the total distance traveled by the car during the six second time interval? Again, we know that our distance is the area in between the line and the x axis. Why do I say in between the line and the x axis? Well, if you're given a VT graph and the slope starts on the negative side, half of you are going to do this, half of you are going to do the area here, which is not what you should do because then you're going to get a positive value. You're taking the area in between the line and the x-axis, right? Just for the future. Just so that you know this for the future. One. What is the total distance traveled by the car under six, during the six-second time interval? T, V, and then zero, and that, that, and... Four and six, and then 
10. Well, this may not be drawn to scale. So what we want to do is we want to separate the area into two parts. Well, let's calculate the area of a triangle first. 1 half base times height. From 0 to 4, it's 4. From 0 to 10, it's 10. That's my height. And then I get 20. And now let's carry, calculate the area of the rectangle. Base times height. Well, from 4 to 6, 2. That's my base. From 0 to 10, that's 10. That's my height. And I get 20. And so my total distance traveled would be 40 meters. Now let's look at number two. What is the acceleration of the car at t is equal to five seconds? Again, we know that on a VT graph, your slope is acceleration. Slope is acceleration. Well, at a at a time of five seconds, there is no slope. There's no rise here. There's no change in y. Your change in y is zero. And if you have a zero on top of any number, it doesn't matter what the denominator is, you're going to get zero. So your slope is zero. So you can say that, well, my acceleration is zero. Number three. Right below, what is the total distance to travel by the object during the first four seconds? Again, you're calculating the area underneath the in between the line and the x-axis. Okay? So this is t, and this is v, and this is 0. Well, 1 half base from 0 to 4 seconds, that's 4. My height is 20. And then I get, no, it's not 80. I get 40 meters. And that's my answer, c. C is my answer. Now, number four. What is the magnitude of the displacement of the car from t is equal to two seconds to t is equal to four seconds? So you want the displacement from t is equal to two to t is equal to four. What you want to do then is you want to calculate the area of that triangle and add up the area of that square. 0, t, v, you want this, and you want this, and this is 4, and this is 2. So the 1 half base times height, we want to do triangle first. The base is 2, you're going from 2 to 4. Uh, and your height, you're going from 20 to 40, and so that's going to be 20, and then you get 20. And now the square. Well, your square is base times height. Your base is 2. Your height is 20. So you're going to get 40. And so you, when you add up all this, you're going to get 60 meters. That's the total displacement from 2 to 4 seconds. Hopefully that helped.